rewrote my talk, so it's no longer about sexy, sexy chiclet. Um, so the universe is really old, like seriously, seriously old. Uh, it's pr to be more precise, it's about 13.7 billion years old, give or take a few hundred million years. But that's a really massive number and really difficult to conceptualize, at least I think so. So what I would like to do is compress that 13.7 billion years into one slightly more relatable week. So that week starts with a bang on the stroke of midnight on Sunday night to Monday morning. And the energy released from that bang goes on to form the first matter of the early universe, so hydrogen and helium. And these clouds of hydrogen and helium, gravity acts upon them, causes them to collapse in on themselves and ignite the very first stars in the universe. And that happened about 37 minutes into our week-long universe, or about 50 million years after the Big Bang. And the first galaxies formed about 45 minutes into our week-long universe. And then the universe became more complex. Inside the cores of these stars, they churned up new, heavier chemical elements. And then at the end of their lives, when they exploded, they sent them hurtling off into space to form yet more molecular clouds that would collapse and form more, more complex um, stars. So then about four and a half billion years ago, or Friday at lunchtime, our own star formed on a relatively unassuming arm of the Milky Way galaxy. And by the end of lunchtime, by 2 p.m., the rest of the planets of our solar system formed from what was left over. And Earth formed from what was left over. And then something pretty special happened between lunchtime on Friday and late Friday night, early Saturday morning. And that was that the Earth came to life. So it probably had very simple beginnings. It was most likely a molecule with the ability to replicate itself, albeit imperfectly. And over hundreds of millions of years, this molecule perfected the process. So it grafted in all of these chemicals, turned up in stars, to make a structure for itself that was more stable, and to make even a code for itself, to, to make the process all more efficient and to keep everything organized. So it used all of the resources that it had, and then for the next few billion years, uh, went on to become everything that we see around us today. So by Saturday, early Saturday morning, we had the first cellular, single-celled life on this planet. And that went on to become everything that you see living in the planet today. And everything that's ever existed started three and a half billion years ago, at least, on this planet. And then on Sunday at one o'clock, so the, the last day in our week, that's when it all kicked off. 900 million years ago, we had the first multicellular life on this planet. And that's when we get the kind of diversity that we can really relate to and that we can really appreciate. And by half seven on Sunday evening, we had the first four-legged animals stumble around the earth. And that's because we had this process of natural selection at, uh, driving these, these different organisms to adapt to all of their new different ecological and environmental and evolutionary niches. So after we had the first four-legged animals, it wasn't until half 11 at night on Sunday night, half an hour before, before our universal week ended, that we had the first higher primates, which were the common ancestors of modern humans, of chimps, and of monkeys. And they didn't start walking upright until two minutes before midnight. So that's when Australopithecus in northern Africa, after climate change had caused the forests to recede and be replaced by plains, decided to stand upright because suddenly it was really useful to see if there was anything trying to kill you on these plains. And then soon after, we had Homo habilis here using tools. And that's when our ancestors started to become really intelligent. Homo habilis, their brain was about half the size of ours. But it set in motion a process of evolution where all of our ancestors and, and closely related cousins were really intelligent and started doing incredible things. We colonized the entire planet. And it wasn't until nine seconds before midnight that human beings appeared in our current form. We haven't really changed much over the last 200,000 years. Slightly less hairy, but for the most part, we're pretty much the same. And the one thing that I think is incredible about compressing this into to one week is that in the, 
everything we've ever written, our entire written history, every scroll, every etching, every ancient script, every piece of chiclet ever written, all happened in the final quarter of a second before midnight. And that's, that's our entire history. So I'd like to finish on a quote by one of my favorite scientists, Jill Tarter, who said that we are the products of a billion year lineage of wandering stardust. We are what happens when a primordial mixture of hydrogen and helium evolves for so long that it begins to ask itself where it came from. Thank you.